You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Harold Perkins, the five-star linebacker out of the Houston area, has decommitted from Texas A&M. I made the announcement on his Twitter with a graphic, said this has been one of the hardest decisions to make, but I'll be decommitting from Texas A&M. We'll announce my decision February 2nd at my school. So his school is, is uh, in Cypress, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston. If you don't know uh, Harold Perkins' backstory, five-star number one linebacker in the country, a top 10 overall player at any position in the country. I believe in the 247 composite, he finished as the seventh overall player in the country. So you're talking about a huge prospect at a major position of need for LSU. And he's a guy that has significant Louisiana ties. Harold Perkins was born in New Orleans. His family evacuated after Katrina to the Houston area and stayed. But if you go look at Harold Perkins' Twitter account, in his Twitter bio, he has 504, the New Orleans area code, obviously, and NOLA boy in his Twitter bio. Despite the fact that he has lived the majority of his life in Houston, he clearly still has a very strong affinity for the city of New Orleans and for the state of Louisiana. The fact that Harold Perkins has decommitted from A&M in and of itself is massive. a and putting together what might be the best recruiting class of all time. So they got a handful of five stars, and based on points, on rating, it might be the highest rated class ever. Perkins is a guy that you get him away from Texas A&M, that's a win all, all itself. He took an official visit to Florida. And this weekend, Harold Perkins will be taking an official visit to LSU. So the number one linebacker in the country, his last official visit, is going to be Baton Rouge. So LSU gets the opportunity to make the final impression on Harold Perkins. So, for so many reasons, this is big news. Number one, obviously, you're keeping him away from Texas A&M. We talk about it all the time in recruiting or in a transfer situation. If you miss out on a guy or a guy transfers, fine, as long as they go far, far, far away. The late Joe McKnight, as devastating as it was for him not to come to LSU, he was time zones away at Southern Cal. You didn't bother with it. When you lose Landon Collins or Devontae Smith to Alabama, that sucks because you got to see him. Elias Ricks transfers to Alabama. Dwight McLaughlin goes to Arkansas. Max Johnson goes to A&M. That sucks because you got to see him. So the fact that, ha that Perkins is not going to A&M, that's a win. Number two... Obviously, as LSU, and maybe of greater consequences, LSU has a chance to land the best linebacker in the country at a position of great need. Getting Micah Baskerville back was massive. You've got Mike Jones as well. So you've got two linebackers that have played a lot of, a lot of football that are going to be your starters. That's still a position where after that, it's a gigantic question mark. You, you bring in West Weeks, the transfer from Virginia, who played a bit as a freshman this past year and you hope that he can be part of your rotation. We know that they're very high on Greg Penn, but another guy that hasn't played a ton of football. And after that, it's all guys that are question marks. If it's Josh White and Antoine Sampa, and guys we've talked about a bunch, but we haven't seen him do it yet. So the opportunity for Harold Perkins as a five-star, number one linebacker in the country, to come in and play immediately is there. And to be an impact guy for three years on your team is there. Mentioned the appeal of Louisiana, which is always a pull. I, I'm gonna, I, I have a feeling that I'm going to recite this for as long as Brian Kelly is the coach. The primary reason he left Notre Dame for LSU is the dirt. It's the dirt. Louisiana has an inherent built-in advantage that only a couple of other schools in the country can claim. You are the only Power Five in a talent-rich state. Dudes from this state, Will Campbell, Walker Howard, they want to play at LSU. And just wait and see if they don't get Jacoby Matthews as well from Ponchatoula. It would be totally naive 
to ignore the NIL component of this. Y'all, there is no program in the country that has benefited more from NIL rules than Texas A&M. This recruiting class they are putting together is in large part due to the fact that they have had more organization among their business community for NIL purposes than any other school. Don't think that LSU is getting in on Harold Perkins just because it's Louisiana. That might be the allure, but the way you get him to decommit from Texas A&M and seal the deal if they're able to push it across the finish line, you better believe there's NIL opportunities. I don't know if it's Gordon at the forefront of this. I don't know if there's others, but I've told you before. Jacoby Matthews is a five-star to Ponchatoula who desperately wants to play in, in his home state. But he's got six figures worth of NIL deals on the table from Texas A&M. If LSU can get close to that or match it, he'll be a Tiger. And my guess is you're going to see something similar with Harold Perkins as well. It's the game. It's the way it's played. It used to be under the table. Now it's out there in the light of day for all to see how this works. That's the system. Use it to your advantage. LSU's getting on that train. This would be massive. Not only because of the player and the caliber of the player, but the position of need and if you're able to swipe him away from your division rival who's putting the finishing touches on a pretty massive class. Huge if they're able to finish it. Harold Perkins will be on campus this weekend in Baton Rouge. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.